and I'll welcome you guys officially to the CanTech webinar series for this week. Today we'll be talking about migrating uh, Intevo Generation 1 to Intevo Generation 2, okay? And for those of you that are not familiar, um, the Intevo is an all-in-one platform. Uh, so it gives basically the uh, CanTech Corporate Edition software and the Exact Vision software on the same computer. Uh, so the Intevo first and foremost is a computer. Um, it comes <clears throat> in two different form factors. So you have the Intevo Compact, uh, which is a smaller unit, a little more lightweight, smaller scale for access and video. And then you have the Intevo Advanced. Uh, now, the difference between the two generations, uh, the, the first iteration of the Intevo um, came out, I guess, about eight or nine years ago now. And uh, it had some functional limitations to it uh, with regard to video. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice between the two uh, is the operating system on board. Uh, the first generation was a Windows 7 machine. The second generation is now a Windows 10 machine. Uh, the first iteration had 30 megabit for the compact of throughput for video. The second iteration has uh, 144 megabit of throughput for the compact. For the advanced, there was a 50 megabit throughput for video on the Gen 1. On the Gen 2, there's 275 megabit of throughput for video. So you, as you can tell, we've kind of ramped things up a bit, okay? A um, <clears throat> couple of other things that are available in the Gen 2 is an automatic update of the Cantec software, uh, as well as Windows updates that are available. Uh, you also have PoE injection uh, for cameras and or K, uh, KT1s. And you also have USB 3, as opposed to USB, uh, adapters for additional storage. So it's a, a couple of different uh, items there that we added to the Gen 2 to make things a little more robust for you. It's also got a much faster processor on board. So how do we migrate from a Generation 1 to a Generation 2? Well, unfortunately, uh, for, the, for the folks out in the field, we do have to buy a new Intel. Um, we cannot just upgrade the operating system on the old. Uh, we have to buy a new. Um, and that's the the benefit of buying the new is the the enhanced features. Okay. So tokens or upgrade codes needed for the migration are included. So you do not have to worry about updating your cap. Okay. All you need to do is call our tech support. Uh, with the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 information, and they will migrate all the uh, SSAs for you, whether it's the exact SSA and or the Cantec SSA or the CAP, okay? <clears throat> as far as additional benefits for you as, with the migration, once the Gen 2 is registered, you have a three-year SSA uh, with, the, with the purchase of the machine, okay? So there's no hey, let's do an, an annual, you have three years. So there is some cost saving, savings when you get into the generation two, once it is registered. And that's the important piece is getting it registered, okay? Now, to migrate, uh, as I said, the tokens are provided by our tech support, so there's no reason to purchase tokens, okay? You will upgrade the gen one to the latest version. OK, at that point, you will back up the Gen 1's database and I'll show you this live uh, in a in a actual database. Uh, we'll do one within the software just so that you guys are familiar with the backup and the restore process. OK. Once the backups are made, you'll copy them over onto a thumb drive and you will install that onto a Gen 2 machine and you'll restore that backup to bring everything current, okay? So it's gonna keep all of your database, right? So all of your devices, your sites, your connections, your controllers, your doors, your relays, inputs, schedules, holidays, access levels, cards, everything, okay? So everything transfers over, okay? 
Now, <clears throat> both in Tebos having the same IP after migration is going to be important, right? You're going to take box one down off the network and you're going to put box two on the network, keeping the same IP schema. This way, all of your devices just automatically start communicating. Okay. On the Gen 2, what you'll do is you go to cantech.com and you're going to register that in Tebo. Okay. We'll merge the licenses by contacting our tech support. They can migrate not only the uh, Cantech license fees or license codes, but they can also migrate the exact license codes. Okay. You'll need the MAC address for the Gen 1 as well as the MAC address for the Gen 2 in order to transfer those camera licenses and everything else, okay? On the Gen 1, we will export the exact vision data, right, just by doing a, a simple backup, okay? And then on the Gen 2, you'll restore that data on the Gen 2 machine. So all your camera information, your record data, uh, your, your camera information as far as the uh, bit rate and the megapixel and the, the any motion sensitivity you have set up will automatically transfer over with the the the, the restore of the backup. Okay. And then finally, um, we will match the SSA inside the software. And this is this is the important part for you guys uh, that are listening in. You're going to have to rebuild your server information in the video tab of the Interpass software, okay? So when you get into the workstation, what you're gonna have to do to, to match everything up with the, the software application, as far as all licenses are concerned, is you're gonna have to build in the video tab a new video server, and you're going to import that camera data uh, like you normally would when you when you add in the in the Interpass software the, the video servers, okay? And again, I'll show you this live as well, okay? <clears throat> and that's gonna marry up all your licenses, okay? As far as the SSAs, the CAPs, everything will be brought into the one Cantech database at that point, okay? Now, what do you do with the Gen 1? Well, you can hang on to it, it is a computer. Um, you're not gonna be able to make use of the Cantech database or the exact database at that point. Um, because the license keys and everything else came over to the Gen 2, but it is a computer, so you can continue to run if you feel like a Windows 7 machine, um, or you can recycle it, okay? What you cannot do is sell it, um, as the licenses, as I said, are hard-coded into the system, uh, so you're not gonna be able to register it elsewhere, and you're not gonna be able to use those camera license codes on it as, as well. It's already been transferred over to the Gen 2. Okay, so two choices with the Gen 1, keep it, trash it, okay, it's completely up to you, up to you at that point, okay. The important thing is all the information has been transferred over into the new Gen 2, okay. So with that, I'll show you guys some live, okay. So in the server, okay, um, Backups can be done in the workstation, but restorations have to be done in the server. So to do backups, we'll be in the options tab and we'll click on the backup scheduler. And this can be done in either the server or the workstation. Most of you will be doing it in the workstation. In the backup scheduler, you can actually schedule where in the folder location, you can specify a folder. You can click on the three dots on the far right hand side and send it to another drive. And this can be included in a mapped network drive if you need be. Okay, so if IT or yourselves have the ability to map your network drive to send your backups to, we can map it to that network drive, select the location, and once you say OK, you can then set up whether it's going to be, and this is an older version. Um, so I'm showing you the separate files versus self-extracting compressed files, okay? The new version of software, you only have separate files, okay? So I'm kind of simulating the old Gen 1s here. So you'll do a separate file, and then you'll set up the frequency, okay? Now for us, in this application, where we're migrating from one machine to another machine, we'll do the now checkbox. 
okay? Otherwise, you'll set up whether it's gonna be a monthly, a weekly, or a daily backup, okay? Now, the important thing as far as scheduling is concerned, for me at least, has always been the frequency of turnover for the end user. Because the important thing to consider here is if the computer fails or if the database gets corrupted, when was your last backup? And the important thing to know is in between those two things, what has changed? Okay, so if a customer is doing, you know, two or three people as far as terminations or hires or whatever the case may be, if they're changing data two or three times a month, a monthly backup is more than sufficient. If they're a retail outlet or a convenience store or a gas station or something along those lines, and they may have a high turnover rate, like 10 or 15 people a week, let's say, I may not want to be doing monthly backups because that 50, 60 person update at the end of the month should happen in that form. We now have an issue as far as the amount of downtime people could be experiencing with their cards, okay? So high turnover ratio locations, I might be doing weekly backups. But for most applications, it'll be a monthly backup. You'll select a day of the month, and then finally the time of the day that you wanna do the backups, okay? Weekly, again, you'll set up weekly, what day of the week, what time of the day, and the minute you hit OK, it's stored in the system. Now for us, when we're migrating from a Gen 1 to a Gen 2, what we'll do is we'll hit the Now button, okay? So on the Intevo Gen 1, we'll do the backup now for our data. We're also gonna do an archive backup. So we'll specify the folder, we'll find the folder that we wanna send it to, We'll do separate files. We'll set up our frequency, right? Now again, migrating from the Intevo Gen 1 to the Intevo Gen 2, we'll go ahead and use the Now button and we'll do the archive backup. If you're maintaining in and out data or anti-passback data, you'll want to do your in and out backups. And if you do have video links as far as triggers and recording parameters already set in your Gen 1 in Tevo, you'll want to migrate those into the Intevo Gen 2 as well. So all four of these backups should be done and put onto some sort of portable media, okay? Once you have them onto a portable media, in the server, we'll go to the backup tab and we can restore our data, our archives, our in and outs, and our video events on the Intevo Gen 2, okay? So step one in the process, let's upgrade the Intevo Gen 1 to 8.22. Let's make four backups. We'll back up the data, the archive, the in and out, and the video events. We'll copy those over onto some sort of portable media so we can transfer all the Intevo Gen 1 data, into the Intevo Gen 2 by going into the server application, going to the restore data, finding our backup file, okay, and restoring that data there. Then we'll restore the archive the same way, we'll restore the in and out the same way, and then we'll restore the video events the same way, okay. Once the restores are complete, the only other thing that we need to do is go into the workstation itself, into the video tab, to the video server icon, where we need to create a new video server. Okay, and we'll title this one in Tevo. Because we're running exact software on the Intevo, you'll maintain the exact server brand. The exact server type is just a listing of the number of cameras you have on the system, okay? Can't really go wrong by saying 256. The IP address, 
because it's all localized, you can use the 127.0.0.1 address. Plug in the username and password for the machine. Okay, and then my suggestion for, for you folks, in the server parameters tab, bypass your DVR messages. This is gonna get rid of some of those annoying motion sensing alarms. Okay, if you have uh, motion recording on your on your exact recorder or on the Intevo, um, this will actually get rid of that, you know, motion sensing detection and restores and things along those lines, okay? Once we have all the information set, we can save it, okay, and then import the camera details, all right? Now, I don't have one actually set up here to import, but that's how you would actually accomplish that, okay? So again, just to kind of walk through it one more time, in the video server, we'll create a new, we'll title it, The server brand will be exact. Server type, I always leave it 256. IP address, username and password. And then in the server parameters tab, bypass your DVR messages to get rid of your motion sensing alarms, okay? When we save it, we can then import those camera details and all your licensing will be taken care of, okay? Now what we'll do is we'll kind of open things up to questions. So if you have questions, please set them up in either the questions section or in the chat section or what I can do is I can actually open up the mics for everybody um, and you can ask your questions live, although I'd rather not do that, but we can, okay? So if you have any questions, please put them into the chat section now. Okay, um, I don't see any questions. So I'm assuming this was uh, just fairly straightforward for you. <clears throat> I wanna thank you guys for attending uh, the, the webinar series today on the migration of Intevo Gen 1 to Intevo Gen 2. Uh, please join us on Wednesday when we'll be talking about the audit trail. So Wednesday at same bat time, same bat channel, We'll be talking about the new and improved audit trail uh, within the IntraPass application. Okay. Thank you all.